Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are talking about the dot product, which is a way to quote unquote multiply two vectors together. Uh, last time we talked a little bit about vectors, specifically vectors in two dimensional space. We talked about what they were, we talked about how to visualize them, and we talked about our two big operations, vector addition and scalar multiplication, right? And so in vector addition, we took a vector plus a vector, and the end result was another vector. In scalar multiplication, we took a vector times a scalar, and the end result was also another vector. We did not talk about vector multiplication, and indeed, I wanna be a little careful about the use of the, the, the language of the word multiplication. Uh, instead, I'm gonna make sure that when I say multiplication here, I am saying it with these quotation marks. The reason is that the dot product works kind of like multiplication, but it's a little funny. In particular, we take two vectors as inputs, but the output is not a vector, right? We'll take two vectors, we'll take their dot product, and the result will actually be a scalar instead, right? So let's see an example of how the dot product works, right? So I'm gonna take the dot product of two vectors. Uh, they have to be the same size vector, but at the moment we're looking at vectors in R2, so they each have two components. So here are two vectors with two components. Uh, I'm gonna call this one A1, A2. So that'll be my vector A, right? And my vector B will be defined similarly. That'll just be B1 and B2. And if I wanted to take their dot product, so if I wanted to take A, dotted with B, what I would do is I would look at the original two vectors, I would take corresponding components, right? So the first component, A1 and B1, the second component, A2 and B2, I would take corresponding components and multiply them together. So this, for example, gives me A1 times B1 and A2 times B2. And then I would just add these up. So the total dot product would be A1 times B1 plus A2 times B2, right? And as we can see, the result is in fact just a scalar or just a number as opposed to a vector. Right? To see a concrete example, right? Let's take, for example, the vector, and I'll you know keep switching around notation to get us comfortable with all our different all of our different notation. Let's take a vector that is the vector, uh, let's say two comma one, and let's dot that with the vector three comma negative four, something like this. Uh, well, if we do that, I would multiply, I would take first component, so two and three, multiply those together, so I would get two times three, plus take the second components, multiply them together, so one times negative four, I'll just get negative four. And so the result is gonna be two times three is six, minus four is two. And so the dot product of these two vectors is in fact the scalar number two. Now, it's worth asking, right? Absolutely worth asking, uh, what is this telling us, right? So we've taken this dot product, we've gotten this number two. What's the significance of this number two, right? So what does that answer actually tell us that's meaningful? And what I'll say at this moment is that the dot product does convey meaningful information. And in particular, it can be used to convey very meaningful geometric information, just in a slightly roundabout way. So this will be an important part of our, or an important tool in our class going forward, the dot product. Uh, let's see one way that we can use this geometrically right here it turns out that we can use the dot product to measure lengths of vectors. Uh, so first of all, worth defining, the length of a given vector v is simply going to be the length of the arrow that we you know, would get from the vector if we drew it in its arrow form in two-dimensional space or in, in n-dimensional space. So the length of a vector v is the length of the arrow that's drawn in R2 and we denote the length of a vector using these sort of double down uh, bars, these double absolute value signs. So this can be read as the length of 
V. It turns out that there is a nice way to calculate this using the dot product, right? And so as a reminder, or I should say as a way to de define this, the length of the vector V is simply going to be the square root of the vector V dotted with itself. As an example of this, right, maybe I'll sort of jump over here. As an example, right, consider the vector uh, 3 comma 4, right? Pick a nice one that we know. So 3 comma 4, if I were to draw this, right, I would go 3 units out and 4 units up. And this is my vector 3 comma 4. The vector 3 comma 4 uh, should have a length of 5, which we can see by considering it as a triangle, right? in which this has a length of 3, this has a length of 4. This is our vector, and so this becomes a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, which I'm just sort of, you know, sort of draw superimposed here. This is a nice 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So the length of that vector v right, should be 5. All right. Now, we can explicitly calculate this by using this formula, right? So the length of this vector will be the square root of, right? I should really say uh, v equals, oh, wait. I should say absolute value. So length of v is equal to the square root of, and then we're going to take v dot v. And so that's going to be square root of, and now to take v dot v, it's going to be 3 comma 4 dotted with 3 comma 4. And so 3, 4 dot 3, 4, well, we'll take the first component, right, times the first component again, so that's 3 squared plus the second component times the second component again, so that's 4 squared. And indeed, right, this just becomes the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. That's just the square root of 25. So that is indeed just 5. Right? And we can see that in calculating the square root of v dot v, we are uncovering the Pythagorean theorem in this 3, 4, 5 setup that we have here. All right? So we can use this formula, and we can use the dot product to calculate lengths of vectors. Love it. There's another way that we can use this, right? That we can use the dot product in a geometric way. And that is to measure angles between vectors. And before I formally tell us how to do this, I want to clarify what I mean when I talk about an angle between vectors. Right, so if I were to draw two vectors, call them v and w. Oh, get my pen back here. Right, so if I were to call this a v, and if I were to call this vector w, then the angle between those two vectors the angle between v and w is just going to be this angle right here. And let me call that theta. The angle between vectors v and w. Uh, just as a small sort of subtle thing here, the angle between our vectors will always be the angle that's less than or equal to 180 degrees. So if, for example, uh, this was my vector v, and this right here was my vector w, Right, then the angle between the two, I would measure it to be this angle right here. That would be my angle theta. Uh, so it's the angle between two vectors when we draw them in space, and it's the angle that's less than or equal to 180 degrees. Uh, and so it turns out that we can explicitly compute this using the following surprising formula. And I won't rigorously prove this formula. We talk about this in a multivariable calculus class. Uh, I'll state it here sort of without proof or without fact, or as a fact. So we can calculate that angle theta by calculating the cosine of the angle theta. And that will turn out to be v dot w divided by the length of v times the length of w. Surprising but true fact here. So again, because the length of v can be computed using dot products, the length of w can be computed using dot products, this entire right-hand side can be computed using only 
dot products. And therefore, we can calculate the cosine of this angle theta just using dot products. Right? And then, of course, once we have that, I should say that that's equivalent to saying that theta itself is going to be the inverse cosine, if we calculate that appropriately, the inverse cosine of v dot w over length of v times length of w. Love it. All right. Um, I will hold off on doing an example of this for now, but we could easily compute such an example, and we'll compute many of these, you know, sort of in class and, and throughout the semester, not to mention in a calculus three class. So through this, we can use the dot product to compute lengths and angles, things that we will care a lot about in geometry going forward. So with that, we'll pause here, and I'll see you next time.